An educational comedy. It's not a cause. Not a movement. It's not a social group you can slap a label on. It's an idea. It's an intention. It's an intuition. A mindset in which reality can be explored. It's a genuine expression. So Critical thinking and imagination. To look inward upon ourselves. To better understand the external world around us. And yes, two egos are bound to be bruised. With our silly, strainy, politically incorrect. Your own adult style of going about things. Real, Real and raw honesty. honesty. Which invites you to be to the fullest. Yes, because there's just been so much ego and competition and, and bullshit, honestly. Quite frankly, just a bunch of bullshit and trauma. We've all been acting out of our wounding. Yeah. So when you're able to rise up out of that as a personal person, like as an individual, then you can start responding to other people in new ways. Like Dave, for instance, is my best friend. And he's been my best friend for like four years. And we have clashed and hit heads and you know everything it's just been so wonderful as a lesson a crash course in, even in in authentic communication you and that has helped me in my entire life you yes. want to tell her about the sheet barrier <laughs> yeah I went and visited him in Chicago and I didn't know how to explain how I was feeling and um, like I literally, he had to put up a sheet because I was so uncomfortable with my emotions and mm -hmm. and all of the the angst that was inside of me. Like back in I don't know 2013, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I put up a sheet barrier because I was like I That's couldn't cool. stand being in the same room. That was that was a beautiful way of using a tool to when you feel like the chaos is coming, the emotional you know stuff is coming up. We use tools. Like how, how Dave said, we didn't worship the tool, but it was something we used to move forward and progress consciousness so we could communicate at, a same, at the same level. He was like, I don't know my space, I don't know my space. I'm like, oh, really? Here. I divided the room with a freaking sheet. I strung up a freaking line, and I took two sheets, so it's like open, closed, like a curtain. Yes. I'm like, I'll use my laptop over there. You can use this computer here. Here, Here's your little grassroots homegrown cubicle. <laughs> now you have your space. And she was totally floored, like, oh, crap. Now I have nothing to shake my fist at and feel mm -hmm. justified. I, I refer to that as the problem is that there is no problem. It's ironic that society has been trained that you know, we, we are told that the word problem and equation are synonyms, and we're told that everything in life is an equation to deal with or a problem to deal with. So when when something isn't happening that we're expecting to happen, we think that's a problem. So when we define life as a never-ending series of problems and then suddenly the problems are gone, then it becomes, we panic because now the problem is that there is no problem. And yeah. we don't know how to deal with that. Oh my God, problem! Ah! I, mean, I, made a, I made a funny graphic about that a long time ago. Like a, a fake Windows error message graphic. And it, it said, you know, something, I'll, I'll look it up later and give it to you later. But it said something to the effect of, you know, Microsoft Windows error generation system. You know, um, the, error, the error, error detection system has noticed that there are no errors to detect and it says you know please correct the problem and it gives a list of suggestions like install adware or malware swipe your hard drive with a magnet you know and all these things but, you know it's again it's like error there are no errors um, I, I, on that same note I want to talk about that because uh, we we're talking about you know authenticity and success right so I think that one of the funny things about you know, being on this personal path of evolution and, and growing as people, as we realize, like, once we get to that point of realizing that the problem is there is no problem, and we start having, like, what Dave likes to call abundance freakouts, and, <laughs> you know, abundance overwhelm, and you're just, abundance like, shock. so frustrated abundance and angry. Shock. Abundance shock, yeah. 
Yes. You're so frustrated and angry, even though there's absolutely nothing wrong. Yeah. You yes. know, I, I'm sure you've probably had plenty of that. Like, I know that I had that when I was traveling, and I was just, like, looking at my surroundings and feeling like, holy shit, I'm here, but, like, why do I feel so anxious and upset? Yes, like, the whole you're, like, addicted to misery. Every time, every time I'm traveling and, like, I'm, I'm going to places that I'm dreaming about going to, then I'm like, am I enjoying myself all the way? Like, no, this is okay, this is supposed to be happening like this, but no, this is like this. It's like, why can't I enjoy myself? Okay, brain, shut up. Let me just enjoy, and then <laughs> let me enjoy. <laughs> it's because you developed an allergy to appreciation. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's so interesting. I'm, though, how you do that. Crack. I'm fiending, goddamn, where's my heroin? <laughs> right, and then and then we create the problems or we create the illusion of problems like by fighting or picking fights. Like I that's one of my favorite abundance shock maneuvers is like to pick a fight with Paul. Like or Paul or or Dave. Like just the other day we were on a Google Hangout and like Fuck you, said, Dave. Why? Just because you're an asshole. Shut up. <laughs> right, and like I just like I shut off the Google Hangout <laughs> because I was like so frustrated. <laughs> I was like I can't deal with this. Like, <laughs> I was like, what is going on? Why am I doing this crap? Yes, yes, and I think the the oh, yeah. same thing was like when we're like go 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 move forward move forward all the time, and then we don't celebrate our successes. And even just for real though, I saw I saw this. When was it? Um, just that you are alive is one of the biggest amazing successes <laughs> ever. Like, you were that one little sperm that won to the egg, and you were a success. Like, I love that, yeah. If you don't celebrate that, if you do not know how to celebrate just that, then you don't know how to celebrate it's any other like, accomplishment that you about, have. I, I was about to ask you, Isabel, did you know that there's a biological component to this? And right as I was thinking that, you're talking about sperm. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, um... I'm sure there is. It's all connected. All the systems are connected. Oh, yeah, check it out. Here's, here's what most people don't know. It's really interesting. This is some helpful knowledge. We have this thing called a hypothalamus that has more pharmaceuticals than your local Walgreens or CVS. And because we're running an electrical sense, uh, uh, central nervous system, everything is frequency-based. So your emotions are frequency-based. Like how, you know, your keyboard communicates with your computer to know what to pop up on the screen, right? So with each of those frequencies, emotions have a frequency and that hypothalamus receives that signal and so that you can literally feel emotion in the body. There is a neural peptide for each and every emotion that you've ever had and didn't even know you're capable of freaking feeling. There's a neural peptide for that and there's receptors in the cells. Well, we live in a society that is pumping us with 24-7 fear. So we've got this stress hormone always pumping through us and stress hormone is so corrosive that they actually use artificial stress hormone in um, anti-organ rejection medication because if you get a new organ the body attacks it as a foreign organism and stress hormone shuts down your immune system. Gee, and people are wondering why they're sick. <laughs> hey, I had that. It's corrosive. But any of those chemicals that you have pumping through your system long enough, your cells start to get addicted to it. So when all of a sudden you clear out all these problems in, in your life, right, that you're not getting that, that stimulus, you're not having that experience for your central nervous system to send that energy up to the hypothalamus and say, hey, release that chemical I'm addicted to. So now your cells are going through withdrawal. It's just like heroin or anything like that. So you're like, no, you're feeding for your misery crack, literally. So it's like, how am I going to get my fix? Oh, create drama. Yes. Then the hypothalamus will fire off what I need, and then my cells will be happy. <laughs> While they're being destroyed by the corrosive freaking stress hormones. Mm. Stress hormones are not meant to pump through you constantly. They're meant to be there for like 15 seconds, so you can avoid becoming roadkill from that oncoming truck as you freaking move that's what the stress hormone is there for to give you a quick kick in the ass <coughs> it's not like to have an IV drip of it going through you all your life <laughs> mm -hmm. yep 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 all of us I feel have dealt with that in some way shape or form I mean I definitely had 
like autoimmune issues and like crazy fibromyalgia and like like chronic fatigue and like all that bullshit. All of it. Like, I was just like drenched in it for my entire life. And so, you know, as I was moving out of that, you know, and my friendship with Dave was really a pivotal point for that. And, you know, I would rage and freak out and it was just like seriously somebody coming off like you know, heroin, like like going to the methadone clinic, like, you know, please, anybody in my fix. <laughs> yes, yes.